Thank you all for joining us here today for everything you need to know to register for spring 2024. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. A recording of this webinar will be sent to the email you use to register. The recording will also be accessible on the event webpage and on our YouTube channel within a week. Please utilize the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to ask your questions today. Our enrollment services specialist will work diligently to answer your questions. If we do not get to your question, we will provide contact information for follow-up. Lastly, we will not utilize the raise hand feature during this session. Today, we will first hear from Dean Suzanne Spreadbury, then we'll discuss the Earn Your Way In admission and open enrollment. We'll then review registration steps and watch a live demo with members of our enrollment services team. To conclude, we'll review financing. We have an exceptional group of panelists here today to prepare you for spring or January registration. It is now my pleasure to welcome our first speaker, Dean Suzanne Spreadbury, Dean of Academic Programs and Chief Academic Officer at Harvard Extension School. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone for being here. I, you know, I'm absolutely thrilled that you're here with us today. You know, as the Dean of Academic Programs, my job really entails thinking every day about you, our wonderful, modern, purpose-driven learners, and ensuring that we bring you the highest quality academic experience. Now, this spring, we are offering over 600 courses in 53 subjects. We have nine micro certificates, nearly 50 multiple course certificates, we have an undergraduate degree in 13 different fields, master's degree in 23 different fields, which includes two that we recently launched this fall in computer science and systems engineering. There is truly something for everyone, I think so. <laughs> and we're accessible in that all you need to do is register for the course that interests you, that follows your passion, that's gonna get you to that next step. And we're flexible in terms of online courses in various formats, synchronous and asynchronous. And we do online differently with interactive personal attention. We provide stackable credentials where you start with a course, you can move on to a certificate and then on to a degree, or you can begin right away on any of our degree programs by earning your way in. Our tuitions are reasonably priced as we bring Harvard University home to you. Now, Harvard Extension School is a truly magical place where students who are eager to learn find faculty who love to teach and academic aspirations are elevated. You will reach academic heights that you never thought possible and you will be well prepared for your next professional adventure whether it's a new job, a promotion, deepening your expertise, or even applying to a doctoral program. And you'll connect with talented, experienced peers who I hope will become lifelong friends or perhaps even some business partners. I know that you're here because you want the best that continuing education has to offer because you believe you deserve the best. And I'm here to tell you is the best is what we provide. Now this webinar will walk you through everything that you need to get started so you can begin your Harvard journey well-prepared. Thank you so much for being here. I so appreciate you considering the Harvard Extension School and wanting to get ready for your first course starting in the spring. And it's a pleasure for me to introduce a dear colleague of mine, Kimberly Park, who's the Executive Director of Pre-Degree Advising, Recruitment and Admissions. Kimberly. Thank you, Suzanne. At Harvard Extension School, we are deeply committed to our mission of making a Harvard education accessible to any student who has the drive and curiosity to succeed at Harvard University. Our open enrollment courses and earn your way in degree program admission philosophy are cornerstones of this mission. Whether you plan to enroll this spring in a course that piques your personal interest, or you intend to use it toward a certificate or a degree for your career, you simply register. No application is required. Many of our students continue along an open enrollment path over several terms, completing a certificate 
or taking individual courses to satisfy their intellectual curiosity. Most of our students decide to pursue a master's or bachelor's degree. Through Earn Your Way In admission, we honor the student you are today, a working professional whose personal and career experiences define who you are and what you're capable of accomplishing right now. To begin a degree, you bring your present abilities into the classroom before you apply for admission. Establishing your academic readiness by completing the required foundational courses in your chosen program. Of course, we understand that your goals may evolve over time. That's why our offerings of individual courses, certificates, and degrees are designed to be adaptable and stackable. You might start with a micro certificate, then continue to earn a graduate certificate, or you might pursue a master's degree and earn a graduate certificate along the way by choosing courses that can be used toward both credentials. Clearly, you have a lot of options as you prepare for enrollment this spring. As you browse courses and make plans, I have a few tips to help ensure a strong start. Be mindful of any course prerequisites, such as English language proficiency and placement tests. We'll touch on these a little bit more later on so that you have the information you need. If you're interested in a degree, explore which courses for admission to your program are available this spring. Prioritize these foundational courses and plan to register in them as soon as possible to secure a spot. If you're not quite sure what you want to study yet, that's fine. Some of our students prefer to test the waters with a single course. We suggest starting with a course that fulfills the requirements for a certificate or degree that you think you might be interested in. That way you can use the credits in the future if you decide to continue. We're always excited to have new students join us each term, and we hope to see you in a class this spring. My colleague, Sean Cleary, the Assistant Director of Enrollment Services, will now walk you through the course, registra course registration steps so that you're ready to register on November 6th. Great. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Um, I'm excited to be here with all of you, and it's great to see so many of you joining in to learn more about registration today. So as Kimberly said, my name is Sean Cleary. I'm the Assistant Director of Enrollment Services here within Harvard's Division of Continuing Education. And this next part of our webinar is going to focus on everything that you need to know to get ready for the registration process. So what better way to start than by actually highlighting some of these major dates that you'll need to keep in mind as we head into November and the holiday season. So first you'll see on the screen that we're gonna be talking about the January session and the spring term. There are some similarities, but there's also some differences in how the calendar and the deadlines are structured for these terms. So first you'll notice that for both the January session and the spring term, you can start to complete the pre-registration process and add courses to your cart this Thursday, October 19th at 9 a.m. Eastern time. So pre-registration is mandatory. It's a process that you'll have to complete through your MyDCE account before the start of every new term. And it basically just is a quick five to 10 minute process where you'll make sure that all of your student and contact information is fully up to date uh, before you get started with the registration process. Once you've done pre-registration, you can navigate over to our course search and registration system, and you can start adding courses to your cart so that you're prepared for registration day. We're going to be diving deeper into the cart feature a little bit further on in today's webinar so you understand better how that works. Then starting on November 6th, which is a Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern time, all students can start to register for their courses. So this is the time where you can start to move those classes out of your cart and push them through the entire course registration process. I'm actually going to be demoing this entire registration process for you shortly so you can see how it works from start to finish. And finally, a big deadline here is the difference in registration. So the January session has a January 2nd course registration deadline. The spring term, because it starts a little bit later, has a January 18th course registration deadline. Students will have until 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on January 2nd and January 18th to finish registering for their desired courses. You'll want to make sure that you're at least registered for one course by these deadlines so that you have the option to go through our course changes period, which is an additional week where you can make course changes or change your credit status if needed. 
I'd also like to call out here, especially for our January session students, um, Harvard University will be closed for winter break December 23rd through January 1st. So that means that we're going to be coming back on the first day of the January term. So if you are pursuing the January session and you have questions, make sure to get in contact us, get in contact with us before that break starts so we can ensure that you have a strong start in the new year. All right, we'll head to the next slide now. So my colleague, Peter Seagreve is here. He is one of our enrollment services specialists on the enrollment services team. And he is going to go through your student checklist to show you what you can start working on now and then what you can start doing when registration opens. So Peter, take it away. Thank you, Sean. Well, hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday from wherever you are joining us from. Um, so here is your student checklist. And like Sean mentioned, there are some items that you can get started with now or starting on November 6th. The first that you can get started for now is creating your MyDCE account, which is like your student account. And we'll move go into depth about some of these later on. So I'm gonna be info dumping, but there'll be more information to come. Um, starting this upcoming Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern time, you will be able to complete registration, which you can find in your MyDCE profile, which we will highlight coming up as well. You want to navigate your course searches. You want to figure out what course piques your interest. What admissions course would you want to take? What graduate certificate course you want to take? You can definitely do that right now, right after this webinar. Look at the courses, get a good idea. Um, and you'll also want to make sure you meet your enrollment requirements to make sure that on November 6th at 9 a.m. Eastern time, you can register for your courses without issue. And then that brings us to November 6th. And um, just a caveat, if you are happen to be an admitted degree candidate with us right now, you can register for a course beginning November 2nd at 9 a.m. But if you are not an admitted degree candidate, you have to register November 6th at 9 a.m. Eastern time. So that would be completing registration that day. You can pay for your course right after registering. About 24 to 48 hours afterwards, you will be able to claim your Harvard key, which you'll need to then access your course website, which is Canvas. And again, we'll talk more in depth about this as we go along. And then the next slide, we will be able to show you how to create your MyDCE account. As my DCE, simply navigate over to the Harvard Extension School homepage, extension.harvard.edu, and click on the My DCE login link at the top of the page. Then, from the My DCE page, click on the Log into My DCE button. You'll see the option to log into My DCE one of two ways with your DCE key and with your Harvard key. So, what's the difference between the two? You'll start by creating your DCE key first, which will allow you to access My DCE and complete course registration. For 24 to 48 hours after you completed registration, you'll receive an email with your Harvard University ID number and instructions on how to claim your Harvard key. Once claimed, your Harvard key can be used to log into My DCE, Canvas course websites, the Health Services Patient Portal for immunization uploads, and all library online resources. So, all of that being said, Let's start by clicking on the Create a DCE Key link to get your account created. Please key in an email address here that you have access to. The email address and password that you key in here will become your DCE Key login credentials. We recommend using your personal email address as using a work email address may cause extension school emails to be blocked due to strong firewall settings. Complete the remaining fields and click Continue when finished. Following the instructions on your screen, please log into the email account you noted on the form to verify your email address. After you clicked on the verification link, you'll be redirected to a confirmation screen. From here, click on the link to access My DCE with. Enter your DCE key login credentials here to get logged in. Once you log in for the first time, you'll be presented with a series of onboarding questions to complete. Once completed, you'll land here on the homepage of your My DCE account. Take some time to get familiar with this page prior to registration starting. It will be your go-to source for everything during your time as a student with us. 
including completing course pre-registration, which will be available for all students to access here on your homepage starting on Thursday, October 19th, completing course registration, making payments, accessing Canvas course websites, submitting transcript requests, and more. If you encounter any issues when creating your account, please contact Enrollment Services for assistance. Our contact information will be shared with you at the very end of today's webinar. All righty, now that you have created your MyDCE account, let's go over some of these um, enrollment requirements that you have to meet before registering for a course. Number one, that this will prevent you from registering for courses. If when you create your MyDCE account and you fill out your student information, if you indicate any language besides English as your native language, you will be required to meet English proficiency. And you can meet English proficiency by submitting a completed transcript from a university or college that um, is mainly taught in English only. And you could also submit a IELTS, TOEFL, and Duolingo at home test with the required passing score. And that's how you can meet English proficiency. Next, you'll wanna be aware if your course requires the test of critical reading and writing skills. It's an hour long test where you read a short story and answer five multiple choice questions and write a short response. Not every course requires a test of critical reading and writing skills. It will be indicated in the course description. Most often these courses are your pro seminar courses and your organizational behavior and microeconomics courses which you require for admission into one of our degree programs. You'll want to take this test before October 26, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, to get your score at 9 a.m. Eastern Time on November 3rd. So you have the ability to register for a course that requires it, again, on November 6 at 9 a.m., and it is a pass-fail basis. Next is the math placement test. Again, not every single course will require this test, and this test is more optional. If you see it indicated that you should take it, it's more so that you should just be prepared at what type of math will be covered in the course, and it won't prevent you from registering if you don't do the test, but it's just a good thing to have done so you are prepared for the course. Next is if you have plan to be on campus whatsoever by visiting our great Harvard libraries, or taking an on-campus course, you need to be up to date with immunizations, especially the COVID-19 shot. For more details, my colleague Leslie will be dropping the link and the exact immunizations requirement in the chat below. And again, will be sent out to you after this webinar has concluded. And on the next slide, here are some of the enrollment policies that all students must adhere to. We do have a minimum age policy. So that with that being said, if you are 15 years or younger, you are not able to take an undergraduate course. You have to be at minimum 15 years old to do an undergraduate course. And for graduate level coursework, you have to be at least 18 years of age. And now we are a full and part-time enrollment. So it's kind of split into fourths. So a full-time student is somebody who is completing 16 credits which is essentially four courses. Three-fourths of the time is 12 credits, half term is eight credits, and part-time would be one course, which is four credits. And now there is also maximum enrollment limits, which is for the spring term is four courses, is the maximum amount of courses you can take. But keep in mind, if you plan on doing a January term course, that will factor into your maximum enrollment. So if you do one January term course, you can only do three courses during the spring. So that is something to keep in mind when you're picking out your courses. Also to keep in mind is some time conflicts. So if your course overlaps at the same exact time, you won't be able to register for both at the same time. So be aware of that when you're picking out the sections for your courses. And now, this doesn't happen often, but it is something to note, and it's important to mention that sometimes there are course cancellations due to unforeseen circumstances regarding professors, things change, life happens, and the schedule changes. That will all be officially communicated from the registrar's office about any course changes or course cancellations, and they will give you enough time to edit your registration to add in the right courses. 
Next is for transfer credits. Now, if you're looking to transfer credits into Harvard Extension School for an undergraduate degree program, you're able to transfer in up to 64 credits at most. And the amount of credits you are able to turn transfer on into is determined at the time of admission. Now, when it comes to graduate level coursework, we do not accept any transfer credit for graduate level work. And now when it comes to transferring credits out of Harvard Extension School, it is based on the institution of which you would like to transfer the credits to. Generally, Harvard Extension School credits are accepted at other schools and universities, but it, every school is different and has different policies, so it's best to check in with those schools to see how our credits were transfer on over. And next, we will, um, my colleague Sean again, will demonstrate on how to register for a course. So take it away, Sean. All right, thank you, Peter. Um, so I am really excited to demo for you exactly how to move, a, how to put a course in your cart and how to move it through the entire course registration process. So I'm hoping that this will be a very helpful section for you to revisit once we send out and post the recording of today's webinar, just so you know exactly what to do on Thursday for adding courses to your cart and how to actually move courses from your cart through the entire registration process starting on November 6th. I wanna highlight first um, that you can always visit our course search and registration system at courses.dce.harvard.edu. You can also access it by going into your My DCE account and clicking on the course registration button from your homepage. That will redirect you right over to the course search and registration system. For today's demo, I'm going to be starting in our course search and registration system and going right from there. So I'm going to cover a lot of things in today's demo. We're going to walk through the basic and advanced search features. If you are looking to pursue a degree or a certificate with us, I'll also talk you through the degree and certificate search, which, which is a really handy tool to identify classes that count towards your intended degree or certificate program. We'll talk about adding courses to your cart how to complete your registration starting on November 6th, how to make course changes, and I'll also highlight where you can go for some troubleshooting in case you get stuck anywhere along the way in the process. So I'm going to screen share now and navigate over to our course search and registration system. Hopefully everyone can see this okay. So we're gonna spend some time in here getting more familiar with what the ins and outs are. What I wanna first start by showing you is if you're going in this way to courses.dce.harvard.edu, the first thing that you'll want to do is to make sure that you're logging in. There's going to be a login button here. I am already logged in as our test student, so my name is displayed. But if you're not logged in, there will be the option to log in. Make sure that you log in with your DCE key login credentials, which we just showed you how to create a moment ago. And then you'll be ready to go with adding courses to your cart and eventually going through the registration process. I also want to highlight here this question mark. This is going to be our troubleshooting page. So if you ever get stuck, definitely feel free to go over here. This is a really great page because if you're presented with any registration warnings, if you get any icons that pop up during the registration process, there are really nice guides here to show, show you exactly what that means so that you know how to fix any issues that occur. There's also really nice walkthroughs here for how to search in the course catalog, uh, whether you're looking at extension school or summer school when that opens later in 2024. There's detailed instructions here on how to create your account and go through the enrollment process. So definitely check this out as a really handy page with a lot of great FAQs and a lot of good information about different registration warnings and also icons and what they mean. So definitely hope that this will be a helpful resource for you going forward. So um, as promised, I want to start by highlighting the different features here on the left side of the page, which are how you can search for classes. The most basic of searches takes place here in the search classes box. Here you can search by keyword, by instructor, by registration number or subject. I would say the majority of students use this feature to search by keyword or by subject. The default term is going to be the January and spring term 2024 as registration will be active for that term only shortly. And then you can also select your part of term if you're interested in taking courses that last for the entire 15 weeks during the spring term, the full term option is great. We also have a lot of seven week options out there. So if you want a half term course, you'd want to select that to see different options. We have active learning weekends where you can come to campus on a Friday, Saturday and Sunday to complete your courses. And then again, we have the January session option here. So if you're interested in that three week term, definitely make sure to select this as your part of term. 
So as a quick example, if I were to look at our available biology classes, I could look at biology, make sure it's set to the spring term, and I'm interested in the full 15 weeks. So this would give me an entire listing of the courses that meet that requirement. You can always go here to reset as well if you want to start your search over from scratch. If you want to take that search a little bit further, you can use our additional filters. This allows you to filter by subject, so everything is in alphabetical order here. Filter by participation option, which Suzanne mentioned earlier. We have online synchronous courses, online asynchronous, as well as on-campus courses. You can filter by section status. I would say this is really helpful once registration is underway so that you can filter by classes that are open, waitlisted, and full, only open, or open, or waitlisted. So it helps to narrow down those options a bit. And you can also filter by credit status. So some of our courses are offered for every single credit status. So you could register undergraduate, graduate, or non-credit. Some courses are only offered for undergraduate credit or only offered for graduate credit. But this is a nice feature in case you want to quickly search by courses that meet the credit status that you're looking for. Next, if you're a degree certificate or pre-medical program student, you can utilize this feature, which will allow you to browse courses based on your degree or program type. I'm going to dive deeper into this a little bit later on because this is how I'm actually going to register for our sample class so you can kind of see this in action. But this is a great place to go so you can see exactly what admissions courses and degree courses will count towards the different requirements for our degrees and certificates. A nice feature too is that anything that you key in to our additional filters and the search classes box will also filter in to your degree search as well. Your cart lives here on the primary cart specifically. Um, the primary cart is where you'll store any classes that you're interested in registering for. And then you'll come back to your cart on November 6th to push everything through the registration process. And we also have some quick links here. If you need to get back to your MyDCE account in a fast manner, you can do so from here. Or after you register for classes, if you wanna go ahead and view your balance and make a payment, you can do this here as well, or you can do it through the homepage of your MyDCE account. So that is a quick look at all the different search options here. So now I want to walk you through taking a course and adding it into your cart and then pushing that course through the entire registration process. So for today's example, we're going to use Expo 34, which is one of our business rhetoric courses. So what I would do is I'd start by searching Expo 34. What you'll first notice here is that there are a lot of different sections of this course. Um, so anytime that you see a course that pulls up with a list like this, it does mean that there's multiple sections. So I would always recommend just clicking through each section to see what time it meets at and what format it meets at to make sure that it's going to be the best option for you. For this example, we'll just go with section one. So once you click on your desired section, if multiple sections are available, you're going to get all of your course details presented here in this panel. I would strongly encourage taking some time to read through this in detail to make sure that you fully understand what you're getting ready to register for. I would say a lot of the questions that we get in enrollment services are typically answered through this panel right here. So you'll see at the top, the term is listed here. So you know that this is a spring term course. For this course specifically, the part of term is January session, so we know that it's going to be a three week long course. The format is a live attendance web conference course. This means that I'm going to have to log into Zoom to participate live during every course meeting. I can see that this section offers multiple credit statuses, so I can register for undergraduate credit or graduate credit. Right now, um, the, it says open, but keep in mind um, that I'm doing this demo in a test environment, so if you look out there right now, you probably won't see that it's open, but on November 6th, um, when registration starts, that will turn to open. Um, I can see that the maximum enrollment for this course is only 18 seats, so this is one of our limited enrollment courses. Once registration starts, if we hit this maximum limit, students will start to be added to a waitlist, so you can see if any students are currently on the waitlist. And I can see that I would earn four credits by taking this course. There's also some important deadlines here. Um, these are here in addition to our academic calendar. I strongly encourage everyone to go to the homepage of the Extension School website and bookmark our academic calendar link from there. We only show the more registration focused deadlines here, but the academic calendar on our website 
breaks down everything in great detail just for you to be aware of as the term progresses. You'll see the instructor information here. You can also click on this link to read a brief biography about the instructor. You'll see the meeting information noted here. I can see that during the January session, I'll be attending this course Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. Something that we get questions about a lot is the time zone. So every time that you see listed in our course catalog reflects the Eastern time zone. This does not adjust based on the time zone that you are located in. So just keep that in mind to make sure that the course time that's listed here is going to work with your time zone as well. You'll also get a description of the course here so you can learn more about what the course is going to teach you. There'll be some notes here from the professor in case there's anything additional they'd like for you to be aware of. If there's any mandatory prerequisites, those would also be noted here too in a separate prere prerequisite section, but this course does not require any prerequisites, so that's why you don't see it noted. The syllabus will be posted here once it's available. As Peter mentioned earlier, we do plan to have the majority of syllabi and course websites fully live um, at least a week before classes start at the very latest, but most professors will have it posted here during the registration cycle so that you can read it before you register for your desired course. You can also view our standard tuition rates, which my colleague Wendy will be talking about in more detail later on. And again, there's a quick recap of all the different sections, just in case you want to review any of the any of the other ones. So now that I've reviewed this, I think that everything looks great and I'm ready to add it to my cart. So I'll click on the add to cart button. You always want to make sure that this is going into your primary cart because this is what you're going to be using for registration purposes. And then I'll click OK. After I do this, it's going to ask me to select my desired credit status. You may remember that this course is offered for undergraduate or graduate credit, so I'm going to decide to take it for graduate. Because this course takes place over Zoom, I do have to view and accept the student recording authorization. So you'll want to make sure that you read through this and feel comfortable with everything there. You'll click that you've read and agreed, and you'll hit Submit. Next, you'll hit Save Changes. And this is where you'll get to see if everything's looking good. Um, if you have forgotten to do pre-registration, or maybe your English proficiency documentation is still under review, or maybe you're trying to sign up for a course that requires the test of critical write, reading and writing skills and you haven't gotten your scores back yet, this is where different error messages will pop up to flag you on what's gonna what's going wrong with your registration. So definitely navigate back over here to this troubleshooting page and it will give you a more detailed description of, of what's causing errors. But since there's nothing that's flagging me here, I'm good to go ahead and submit my schedule. And then my final step is to click on the submit registration button, which will fully register me for the course. And then it'll just take a second to register. And then I get the confirmation that the class has been added to my schedule. And if I'm ready to do so, I can also go ahead and view my balance and make a payment. And that will redirect me into the student finance portal to do so. What you can always do at any time is go back to your cart if you need to verify your course details. Everything will be here for you. You can click on this. You can get all the details again here. This is important and really helpful for students because after you register for a course, we actually don't send you a confirmation reminder email and the, or a confirmation email about your registration, mainly because you can go back in your cart to confirm that you're registered and get all the details. And you can also go to the main page of your My DCE account. There's a My Courses section there right on the home page, and it contains all of your registration history as well. So you can also use that to confirm that you're fully registered for the course. You can also make course changes in here. So if you ever need to edit your credit status or you want to just drop or withdraw yourself from the course, whether that's before it starts or once it actually has started, you can always come back into your cart to do that here. So the cart is definitely going to be a very important feature for you. So now that you are all registered for your first course with us and you're getting ready to pay, what you'll want to be on the lookout for next is an email that will come into your inbox 24 to 48 hours after you registered. This is going to contain information about your Harvard key as well as your Harvard University ID number. It's going to give you instructions on how to set up your Harvard key login credentials 
And you can actually start to use your Harvard key to log into everything instead of your DCE key once you have that set up. The reason that Harvard key is your preferred long-term login method is because you're going to use it to access many of Harvard's resources, like Peter touched on earlier. You'll be able to upload any immunization documents in our patient portal using your Harvard key. That's going to be crucial if you have an on-campus presence of any kind. You can use it to access all of our online library resources. And a major one is using it to access Canvas, which is our course websites. So I am going to get ready now to pass it over to Peter, and he is going to tell you a little bit more about Canvas, um, specifically what it is, um, why it's important, and how you'll be able to access it. All right. Thank you, Sean. Hello again. Um, so Canvas is your course website. You're going to want to get really familiar with Canvas. You're going to be able to access Canvas with your Harvard key, which again, we kind of have drilled into you at this point. You'll be able to claim within 24 to 48 hours of registering for your course. And you'll need your Harvard key. And as, as cliche as it sounds, it's your key to har everything Harvard. You'll use that to access Canvas, which again is your course website. So if you're doing an online live web conference course, Canvas is where your Zoom link will live. Canvas is where also you'll submit your assignments. You can contact your fellow students, your instructors, everything. You can, your grades throughout the semester will be posted in Canvas, but your final grades will be posted somewhere different. But definitely, definitely get comfortable with Canvas as it gets closer to the semester because you're going to be using it a whole lot and like it's right on your my dce profile and again canvas will be your best friend i'm a degree candidate myself and i live in canvas during the semester so let's go to the next slide all right and then some things to note that may be helpful for you um monitoring your email um, a lot of times, unfortunately, our emails somehow end up in spam and junk. Don't know how that happens, but it does. Um, so add inquiry at extension.harvard.edu to a safe sender. Avoid using email accounts that maybe have stricter firewalls attached to them. Think like work emails, school emails. That's why we encourage you when you create your student account to use probably your personal email address. One, because you'll probably, you won't you lose access to that anytime soon, and two, they have st less strict firewall accounts attached to them. So you should get our emails, which are very important. Um, and now if you're thinking about like, oh, my syllabus isn't posted yet, or my Canvas isn't posted, like I registered on November 6th, it's November 10th, I don't have a Canvas page, what's happening? That's okay, don't panic. It That is typical because Canvas is, published by the instructors themselves. So as the instructor gets ready for them, they will publish them. But have no fear if your instructor, say, forgets to publish it for the January session, all the course syllabi and Canvas websites will be posted by December 18th, the week of the 18th, right before Christmas um, holiday break. And then for the spring term, all course websites and syllabus will be published more at minimum maximum, sorry, um, one week before the start of courses. Again, um, if your Canvas is not there, right, when you, after you registered and claimed your Harvard key, don't panic. It's okay. It will be published at the very latest one week before the start of courses. And now I'm going to pass it on over to my colleague, Wendy, from Student Financial Services, who will give you some financial um, learning. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Wendy Abramo Merrill. I work in Student Financial Services as the Student Accounts Manager. We're the office that oversees tuition charges. We process payments and manage any refunds that might be due. We also have folks on our team who process financial aid, veteran and military benefits, as well as a program that invoices certain third party partners. First, I want to acknowledge financing can be one of the most stressful parts of returning to school. And as my colleagues have noted at the Harvard Extension School, we pride ourselves on accessibility. We believe that a quality education should be affordable, and we're here to help you navigate the process of financing your education. The tuition rates for spring are $510 per credit for courses at the undergraduate level and $805 per credit for courses at the graduate level. As most courses are four credits, the tuition for most courses is $2,040 at the undergraduate level or $3,220 at the graduate level this spring. 
the number of credits and the actual tuition associated with the course is included in the course description. Once you have registered for classes, you can log into MyDCE and click on Financial Services to see and pay your tuition charges. Please be sure to keep the following payment deadlines in mind for the spring. For the January session, the full payment deadline is Thursday, December 7. For the spring term, the full payment deadline is Thursday, January 4. Financing your Harvard Extension School journey will look different depending upon your pathway. If you're not yet or don't intend to be admitted to a degree program, there are a few options for paying your balance. You can pay online with a credit card or an e-check. If you're outside of the U.S. or inside the U.S. but prefer to pay with a bank wire, you can choose TransferMate as your online payment method, and you'll be given special instructions on what to do next. If another person, like a family member, will be paying tuition for you, you can make them an authorized user, which will grant them access to your student account. There are certain private loans that can be certified for students who are not admitted to a degree program. If you are using 529 funds, please arrange to have the planned administrator mail a paper check to us. If there's another form of support you are hoping to use, please contact our office directly and we can discuss it. I'm also really excited that I get to announce this. Um, Harvard Extension School is now offering payment plans to all. This is a very new decision and more information is going to be available soon, but the important thing for you to know today is that once you're registered for courses, you will be able to enroll yourself in a payment plan directly from this uh, financial services portal. Uh, if you are a veteran or in the military on active duty and you have tuition benefit, you can send related documents to us by using the document uploader, which you will find in my DCE. A specialist will review your documents and follow up with you directly. Most of these programs will allow you to use your benefits for a maximum of two semesters as a non-admitted student. I did mention that Harvard Extension School can invoice certain third parties. We work with Edisist and ISTS. These are two companies who administer tuition benefits for large employers. If your workplace benefits include tuition assistance managed by one of these two organizations, please contact your HR or benefits team to inquire about using that benefit. If your employer is not a client of EdAssist or ISTS, ask them if they offer tuition uh, reimbursement. Many employers do. Students who are admitted to a degree program will have a few more options for financing your education. Federal student aid is available once you are admitted. Extension school grant is available to students who complete their financial aid application by the priority deadline, demonstrate financial need, and maintain satisfactory academic progress. Mass grant and mass part-time grant can also be certified for students who are eligible. And if you live outside of Massachusetts, check with your local state agency to see what programs might be available to you. We can award eligible students federal, state, and institutional aid once they are admitted to a degree program. In the semester when you will be taking the last of your courses required for admission, please check the website for our priority deadline for the upcoming term. There are two important things you will need to do by that date in order for your application to be complete. You will need to file your FAFSA and complete a financial aid supplement in the financial aid portal on my DCE. It takes about five days for us to receive your FAFSA data, so please don't wait until the last minute to fill that out. Students who meet the priority deadline will receive their financial aid notification by email before the full payment deadline, and the only exception to that will be in your admissions semester. As admissions notifications come out after the payment deadlines, students will need to pay their balance by the full payment deadline. But for everyone, regardless of how you're financing your education, your account will need to be paid by the full payment deadline for the term. For the spring, that's uh, Thursday, January 4th. If you're taking any courses in that short January session, the payment deadline for those courses is Thursday, uh, December 7. If you are not paid in full by the full payment deadline, you are at risk of being dropped from all courses and wait lists. If you pay your tuition and end up dropping a course and are due a refund, Student Financial Services will issue that refund. If you paid by credit card, we will refund your credit card. If you paid with an e-check or a check, we'll issue either a paper check for you, or if you enroll in the program, we can send you the funds by direct deposit. To learn more about financing your Harvard Extension School education, please visit our website, which will now be added to the chat. Um, if you have any additional questions, please contact us by email. We also have phone support. And if you'd like to come see us in person, we recommend you please schedule an appointment in advance so that we're sure the right person uh, will be available to help you. 
at Student Financial Services, we are here to help you succeed and we really hope to see you in classes this spring. Sean, back over to you. All right, thank you, Wendy. And I'm also going to invite my colleague Peter back um, as we get ready to wrap up. Um, we wanted to highlight a few frequently asked questions that we get in enrollment services that we didn't have time to dive super deep into today, but are still important to know. Um, so I'm going to let Peter take this first question and we will run through these for you. Thanks, Sean. And again, as I previously have stated, I am currently a ALM degree candidate for the field of history. So I understand the question about are the HES degrees the same as other degrees? And I notice in the chat that that's a very popular question. And to answer that question simply, yes, it is the carries the full weight of Harvard University. Your degree will say Harvard University on the top in extension studies, masters of liberal arts or bachelors of liberal arts in Latin, because you know, it's Harvard has to be a little fancy, um, but your degree is fully accredited by Harvard University. There's 12 schools that make up Harvard University, like Harvard Law, Harvard Med, Harvard College, and Harvard Extension is one of those 12 degree granting schools. So your degree does carry the same weight. You get to participate in Harvard commencement every May on the yard. You get to join the Harvard Alumni Association after you completed a degree at Harvard Extension School. And I'm going to pass it back on to Sean for the next question. Great. Another question we get a lot is how long does it take to complete degree or certificate programs at Harvard Extension School? So I'm going to kind of break this down by type um, to make it make the most sense. So if you're a student who's looking at our degree programs at the undergraduate level, there is technically not a timeline in place just because there are a lot of credits that are involved in that degree program. So you'll be able to work at your own pace and be able to complete that over however much time that you may need. With our graduate degrees, there is a stricter time limit in place. Um, graduate students uh, have five years max to complete all of the courses required for their graduate degree. That timeline will start after you've completed any two degree applicable courses. When it comes to our certificate programs, we offer three types, graduate certificates, undergraduate certificates, and micro certificates. So the graduate certificates and the undergraduate certificates have a timeline of three years max to complete. Um, with our graduate certificates, you're typically taking about three to five courses during that time, depending on the certificate. And with the undergrad certificates, you're taking three courses during that three-year period. You're welcome to finish those faster than those timelines if you'd like to, but we want to make sure that we give you plenty of time if you need to use that entire three years. And with our micro certificates, those are need to be completed within three terms. So for example, a fall, spring, and summer term. There are only two courses that are required for those micro certificates, which is why there's a shorter timeline attached to them. All right, Peter, back to you. All right, and now next question. Does HES offer assistance to students with learning and or physical disabilities? Yes, we have a great accessibility office that will be here to help you. Um, you can contact them via email. Um, we have a whole web page on the Extension School's website devoted to um, accessibility services. So, and that will be included in the email out to you uh, after we conclude this webinar. And back on to Sean. All right, our next question in, is more so for our international students. Does Harvard Extension School provide I-20 certificates for on-campus study for international students? The answer to that question is no. Um, Harvard Extension School does not issue I-20 certificates for on-campus study. However, Harvard Summer School does. So if, especially if you're a degree candidate who's looking to complete your on-campus requirement, keep Harvard Summer School in the back of your mind because there are plenty of options there to complete on-campus courses. Um, there's a seven-week option, there's a three-week option, and there will also be a new four-week option next year as well. Um, so if you are needing an I-20 certificate, Harvard Summer School will be your go-to. And more detailed information about Harvard Summer School 2024 uh, will be rolling out on our website sometime in mid to late January. And, and similar along the lines to this question, does HES provide on-campus housing for students? The simple answer to this is no for the fall, January, and spring terms. Harvard Summer School, however, does offer housing on campus for anyone if you're admitted into one of the two high school programs or a general program student. And the reason why we do not offer housing on campus for this 
spring and fall is because the dormitories are used by Harvard College students and other fully residential programs. And since Harvard Extension School is a hybrid program, it's just not possible to have the space to offer housing. Right. And our last question is one that we've actually seen coming through increasingly more and more this fall. Does Harvard Extension School offer fee waivers for the TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo tests? Um, the answer to that is no. Uh, we do realize that some schools do offer those waivers, and I think that may be prompting a lot of those questions our direction, um, but it, at the current time, we do not offer fee waivers for those three English proficiency tests. All right, so before we close with our contact information, I want to quickly recap the upcoming registration dates uh, that you'll definitely want to mark on your calendars. Um, this Thursday, October 19th, we will be opening pre-registration and carts to all students at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. So that is your opportunity to go ahead and verify your contact and student information in your MyDCE account, and then navigate over to courses.dce.harvard.edu and start to browse our course catalog and add courses to your cart. Then on Monday, November 6th at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, all students can start going back into their accounts and moving their courses out of their carts and through the entire course registration process, which is what I demoed a little bit earlier on in today's presentation. And all of our January session students will have until 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on January 2nd to get registered for courses. And all of our spring term students will have until 11.59 p.m. Eastern time on January 18th to register for courses. And just to plug um, again that we do have a winter break that happens right before the January session starts. So if you are a January session student, I would strongly encourage you to get in touch with us by December 22nd with your questions um, so that we can best assist you before we go on break. And to close today, um, here is all of the different ways that you can contact us here in Enrollment Services. You can email us at inquiry at extension.harvard.edu with your questions. Um, typically, um, due to higher volume, you can expect a response within about two to three business days from us. You can give us a call at the number on the screen Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 p.m. Eastern, or 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, if you would rather join us virtually for a more one-on-one -on -one or group conversation, you're more than welcome to do so. We have virtual Q&A sessions, which are held on Zoom every Thursday from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern time. Those will be starting up again next week. Um, so Thursday, October 26th would be a date to keep in mind. Um, these are opportunities for you to join other students and just ask us general questions that are on your mind. Um, so probably a lot of the questions that you've been asking here in the the Q&A today, we, we will be able to answer during those sessions. You can also schedule a virtual appointment with us, which is a 15-minute one-on-one appointment. We offer those every Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern time. Those will also be starting up again next week. Or if you're local to the area, if you're in Boston or Cambridge or pretty close by, you're always welcome to come visit us in person. We offer in-person walk-in hours with no appointments required Monday through Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at our office at 51 Brattle Street. Uh, so a short time from now, you will be receiving an email from us um, that will provide you with a link and more information about how to contact us. So definitely reference that so that you're able to get in touch with us. Um, I know that we had a lot of questions coming in through the Q&A today, and we may not have been able to get to all of them, but there's so much time um, coming up to get your questions answered before registration starts. And even once it starts, um, feel free to send us your questions. We want to make sure that you fully understand everything that we've gone through today um, and feel confident navigating the registration and payment processes. Um, you should expect the recording for today's webinar to be in your inbox this Thursday, October 19th. And we will also be posting the recording on the Harvard Extension School YouTube page as well. So if for some reason you missed that email or maybe it ends up in your junk or spam, navigate over to YouTube and you can also uh, revisit any parts of this presentation that way as well. So on behalf of everyone here at Harvard Extension School who is joining me today, I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your day to learn more about how to get prepared for the spring 2024 term. We really hope that this was a useful resource for you and something that you can come back to revisit and use as a guide as you start to navigate your way through the different steps in the enrollment process. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to myself and my team here in Enrollment Services, and we're more than happy to help you. So thank you so much, and we hope to see you in class here on campus or virtually very soon.